I'm racers Marshall Pruitt qualifying for the 107th Indianapolis 500 is over Alex Palo welcome to your first Indy 500 poll good lord this looked like it was going to be a team Chevy party based on what happened in the fast 12 today Felix Rosenquist Santino Ferrucci it looked like the bow tie had total command on run for the pole and what do we have alex Pillow surprise of the day but should we be surprised not because he's driving for chip ganassi racing the defending race winner they now have three consecutive poles here it might even be more i don't even know but uh is it the chip ganassi thing where you go no nah, that shouldn't be a surprise no it's this alex Pillow, 2021 indycar champion we know how phenomenally good he is there's a bunch of beeping sounds. They're breaking down pit lane, but that's okay. Uh, there's no limit for this kid. That's the surprise or reminder of whenever you think this is where he's at, this is what we're gonna get, this is, no. He seems to find something more. So just massive respect to him. Final year at Chip Ganassi Racing, headed to Aero McLaren afterwards, dueled with his future team here for pole a lot of drama going on there so congratulations to him honestly I uh, will speak with Connor Daly about this in just a minute but congratulations to team Chevy and Honda performance development seriously these two battle like cats and dogs and we are the beneficiaries of their skills and efforts and just hardcore competitive edge so think about a few other things too we're going to close this with Jack Harvey, who bumped his teammate Graham Rahal out. This last chance qualifying this year, at least as I received it as it was happening, is a joyless thing. I mean, it's one thing if you have four cars for three spots or five for three, whatever the number is. If they're truly fighting and bettering one another and leveling up to get in, over this one hour LCQ qualifying session. To me, it was just sad and unfortunate that this was not a battle of better. It was who's not gonna be the worst. And so the whole time, whether it was Jack Harvey, Graham Ray Hall, Christian Lundgaard, Stingray Rob, there's no one to blame. I mean, my suggestion of should we just do a 10 minute last chance qualifying tow party. They all go out and whoever sets the fastest tow lap, those three get in and the others don't. I don't know, maybe there's another way to do this. But again, to me, it was just a case of drivers going out and running and being way too slow. And the other one would go out and be way too slow. And then finally, on that very last run, Jack Harvey looks like he's not gonna make it in those first two of his four laps and then he finds a little bit more, and then he finds a little bit more and bumps Graham Rahal out, as Jack will tell you in a little bit. This was not something that had any love and joy in it. It's part of the job. He's here to get into the show. There's no point in time he would actually step back and lift off the throttle to allow a teammate in, nor would they. That's not who they are as professional athletes but nonetheless i'd wish it was just something that was truly competitive so at least we could say wow of those four the four of you really sorted out who was the slowest it's a bit of a letdown in that department for me another thing here just to think about as we close and, and move into our interviews on that end you think about graham him on the side pod in tears that wasn't performance that wasn't that was as honest emotions as you're going to find and we've had questions over the last 24 hours or so if graham's bumped will they yank catherine leg out or one of the other teammates to go in i can tell you this if there's anyone at the team that wants that to happen that's on them Knowing Graham as I have for a long time, I can tell you he is the most self-aware and self-conscious IndyCar driver 
I believe that we have. And I don't mean that in a bad or critical way. I mean, he is more aware than any other driver as to how he is perceived. He believes that at least in the online world, he's mostly hated and taken to task for everything possible. He's aware of how a number of folks feel about him. Knowing that he's in the final years of his career, is he gonna retire at the end of this year, next, who knows? But he knows he's got a short-ish amount of time left as a full-time driver. Knowing how aware he is of his reputation and history and career, he's the last guy who would say, yep, I'm going to take something I didn't earn. Having that kind of legacy hung upon him, him welcoming that legacy to then have, knowing that there's not too much time left in full-time career for him, I just cannot see him at any point in time saying, yes, give me something I didn't earn, and I'm going to be reminded of that for the rest of my living days. So. If someone at RLL suggests it, okay, but I just can't see Graham accepting that. What normally happens when a, a car like this gets bumped with a lot of very important sponsors to them? Take a look, carb day probably. I doubt tomorrow, Monday, this final two hour practice session, they'll get anything done, but you'll see United Rentals and you'll see all kinds of things that are prominent on Graham's car. You'll see those things show up on the other three RLL entries, that's the norm. But other than that, uh, I believe Graham Rahal, who stayed and spoke with folks and congratulated Jack Harvey afterwards and was gracious with all the fans and well-wishers and such, the guy gets a lot of heat for just being himself. But I can tell you, in terms of class, you're not gonna find a finer example of that guy who really does care, who loves this sport, and wants to make sure that he does things the right way, just like his dad. So not so happy about how this uh, LCQ played out just in terms of it being sad, but nonetheless, congratulations to Alex Pillow. Chip Ganassi Racing, we are going to have a whale of a race next Sunday, but for now, let's get rolling with our man, Connor Daly, to give us some context. Let's get rolling with Jack Harvey afterwards, and let's, maybe at the end of the video, show you my favorite thing of this week, and that is IndyCar race director Kyle Novak and his style of telling drivers it was time to go and go qualify. He wasn't telling folks to give him four good ones. As a former, I think, like Little League umpire and whatnot, uh, he does a little pew, pew, pew finger gun thing to give folks the go sign. Uh, I loved it. It had me cracking up. I asked him about it. He's like, yeah, hey, well, it used to be an ump, so steer right. So just enjoy that. One of the little quirks of IndyCar, but good on you, Kyle Novak, for doing something cool. And thanks to y'all for watching. I'm Racers Marshall Pruitt. This is Ed Carpenter Racing's Connor Daly. He's actually changed his middle name to Bitmile. It's pretty impressive. Yes. Qualifying for the 107th Indianapolis 500 is over. This was an exciting thing, Connor. I didn't know if it was going to be, but it delivered. You were here with a bunch of drivers rooting for various folks. You've been here for a lot of these. Tell me about the emotion that comes up on the stage like nothing else in sports. Man, it is unbelievable. Um, you know, I, I, yesterday I was I was hating everything about life because we just quite, couldn't quite get the speed to be here. But you know, our team did a great job here putting Renus on the front row. Uh, super proud of those guys. But just the emotion all across the board. I mean, watching, I, I thought there was no shot that Jack could have got in the race. Jack I mean, Harvey. The, the engines heat up, and like you immediately think you lose speed. And I was like, there's no way. And one little wing adjustment, one little, you know, small tweak to put the car in the window for them, I guess, worked. And, I mean, to see Graham get bumped, I mean, it's, it's, it's a crazy, because, like, I, I like both of those guys a lot. And it's like, how do you, like, like we were celebrating, but you're like, I don't also, I don't, I'm half celebrating and half like, oh my gosh, that's insane. It's so, like being so at a, much. A, a combo wedding and funeral. It, yes. It's like... It just doesn't reconcile. 
Great stuff, though. I mean, my gosh, like, this is why people, this is why you, like, I mean, people went nuts here. Like, there's a huge crowd here for Paul Mike. You come to see that crazy stuff. This race is the biggest thing in the world. It's the most important thing in the world. And there are people that, you know, don't make it sometimes. And that's part of what makes it so hard. Another thing that always just blows my mind, I've been seeing it forever. You do it on a regular basis. Just a few minutes ago, there were six human beings firing into turn one at like 243 miles an hour. That does not happen anywhere else on planet Earth, and they're battling each other for pull. Tell folks how extraordinary that is and how it's like being in warp speed in a movie, yet having to be millimeter perfect. This is insane stuff. It's so difficult, and you just you have to be in the right window. Your entire engineering group Everyone has to be on the same page. We're talking like quarter turns a wing, tiny little bits of camber here and there to help put you in the window for four laps. It's something that honestly, like we qualified at 232.4, which like if you would have asked me a few years ago that like that would have been 16th, you're like, that's that's insane. And you're but hating like, life now. I know, and, and, and it's, it's everyone is so fast, everyone is so good, all these teams are at such a high level. Um, that it's 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 actually it, it's it feels very cool to be a part of, and I just I, I always fight for this series as do you. I mean this deserves you know more and more respect. Every single qualifying run should be on Sports Center tonight. It should be the top of the evening news. How crazy it was to see Graham Ray Hall 30 years after his father got bumped in tears. I mean crying on crazy. His side I mean that's like this is the coolest stuff in sports. It's the craziest thing ever. Let's close on this because this is something I was hoping for as the week was building along to qualifying we had happen. Last year, Honda was a raging animal that could not be contained. That bow tie that you wear proudly on all of your clothes and half strap behind you, this was a real question who was going to come away with pole. Big, big love for Team Chevy for being there. Honda, of course, there as well. but. Talk to me about the effort, at least from the bow tie side, to be here. We don't know who's going to win next yes. Sunday, and I love that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you see Honda P1, Chevy P2, both fighting for the pole. I mean, that's how you want it. You want two engine manufacturers going after it. I think we've seen a great improvement from Chevy uh, this year uh, here at the Speedway for sure. Um, they've done an incredible job. So to be a part of the Team Chevy group, uh, you knew they were going to work on it. You knew they were going to push as hard as they could because they want to win here more than anyone else, obviously. Chevy Pace car, we got Corvettes everywhere around here. So um, pretty cool. I mean, the competition, it's, I think it's the best it's ever been. And it, it, there's, there's, there's no one that can argue that. It's just the best, most competitive racing series in the world, some of the best racing in the world, and it's just some of the best drivers in the world. You know, I want to get one more piece of context from you because you're perfect for it, having grown up here. I don't know what the numbers are yet, obviously, of crowd attendance today or yesterday. This feels like we didn't have a little bit. We just felt like we had more people, more energy. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's all 100 days to Indy. I don't know what, brother. But did you see and feel like there's something extra coming back here? It felt great this whole weekend. Honestly, the whole practice week. Even the day one that it got rained out. I mean, every time you walked outside, you're still signing stuff for people in the rain. So, like, there's a ton going on here. There's more and more excitement than I think I've ever seen. I know that we're actually quite close to selling this event out. And I hope in this week leading up to the race, people buy tickets that don't have tickets because it's gonna be an incredible show. If there's this qualifying drama doesn't let you know that, then you're probably not watching it correctly. So get your tickets to the race if you haven't yet because I know this thing's gonna sell out. I really want it to sell out because uh, then we can lift the blackout hopefully. So it also knows? deserves it. It deserves it I completely agree. Deserves. This event deserves to be sold out. It's some of the best racing on the planet right now. Well, I, I think it is the best racing on the planet right now. Um, and it's it's just it's it's next level. So I, and I want to win next weekend too. So yeah. I don't know fun. how many thousands of tickets are left, but he said if you buy them, you can come over to his house. Uh, there's uh, a free hot tub there if you want. Yes, to there's a free hot tub. It's inflatable. Connor Bitnile Daily right here. Thanks for joining us, brother. Up next, Jack Harvey, a man full of mixed emotions, but. 33rd and final participant in the 107th Indy 500. Jack Harvey, I was not a fan of this Hunger Games Ray Hall edition you unfortunately just had to participate in. But I'll tell you one thing, 
this kid who showed grit and determination and just balls like you wouldn't believe coming up the junior open wheel ladder in an Indy light who just ragged cars to get every last ounce of speed out of them. That's the guy I just saw, final run, make it into the Indy 500. Tell me about the run, tell me about the emotions. This is a classic Jack Harvey performance. Thank you. Um, oh man, I, I don't know. I, you know, we had made a couple of runs already. Uh, you know, balance wasn't great. We weren't fast, and in the end, through the through that session, just in general, we put downforce in, then took a bit of front wing out. It was pretty neutral. And so it's a guy. I think I'm just I'm too free and I'm scrubbing. And um, you know, it's, it's hard. I just wanted to block out everything. You know, I didn't even ask the times. I didn't even look for them when I was driving. I just tried to drive the best balance I could, tried to be the most proactive on the tools I could be. I was still a little neutral, I had to sniff in the front bar on the run, but um, and i got to say, from crossing the finish line to then finally radioing me, it just felt like an eternity. Um, and that is a weird moment, man. Like, you know, like you said, it feels like we're in the Hunger Games, and the best case scenario is all three of our cars transferred. Uh, obviously that didn't happen, and you know, I just hate that, uh, I hate we, we knocked Graham out, I wish we were in this situation. Um, I'm very grateful to be in 107th run in Last thing for you, brother. Tell me about that side. Graham sitting on the side pod in tears because he's sad because this means so much to him. The inverse is what you demonstrated. You did not want to have to be in that position. Tell me about that because you talk about blocking things out. You could be a total mess and miss your marks and miss your game. That took some steel. Well, I just say thanks to my mum and dad for them, that really, because they're the ones who have really molded me into the person I am, uh, you know, in personality and mentality and things like that. And I didn't want to say thanks to my dad because all day he believed that we could make the race. And he's always here with you. And he always is here. And I don't know, there was definitely moments where I didn't think we were going to, even honestly, the first two runs of qualifying we weren't going to. And, you know, like in that moment, I'm not always a giddy, optimistic person. I want the reality of the situation. And However, now I'm so appreciative to have you know my entire family support. My sister's been texting me all day. My mum flew out to be here too. Um, you know, just in terms of uh, you know blocking it out. It's, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough. It's Indy 500. You got to. You know, I, the emotion of it still feels super high now. Um, I, I just feel grateful. I feel very grateful to be here. But I said that yesterday. You know, like. Even if we hadn't have qualified, I still love this place. You know, I respect the Indy 500. I hate that we knocked out Graham. Graham's one of my closest friends. You know, Graham's a guy I call He recruited you to come to the team. He definitely did. We went for dinner in Monterey. Um, you know, but he is a guy that, you know, I text when I've got an issue or what his opinion on something. It's, a, it's an awful feeling to knock out a mate. Being in the race, it's just, it means a world to me. Happy to be in the 500, obviously, but cheerless. So congratulations, Jack. But not much celebration.